Okay, so today is the last teaching of GPS. Praise God. I thought you'd be excited about that. Have you learned anything so far? Please, this is a series you should get and feed on it. Being guided by God and being led by God, it is such, it's too important. It's too important in your Christian work. The, the, part of the problem is that we have many people in, we have many people in churches that, that know the church uh, and know the pastor, but they don't know the Lord for themselves. So it causes us problems because these are the people that backslide. These are people that when, when things go wrong for them, they don't have a personal relationship with God. They don't know God for themselves. They don't know God for themselves. Communion with God, hearing God, is crucial for your life. Too crucial. Too crucial. You too. You, ah, it's, it's in every step of the way, the steps of a righteous man are what? Ordered of the Lord. It's, 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 in our co- it's, it's so natural. God has been speaking from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. He has been speaking. Adam didn't, didn't even entertain the thought that he would just be talking to God and God would never speak back. It never, it never occurred to him that it's possible to be praying and just be praying and telling God things and you never hear. God usually answers to us by instructions. Somebody get what I'm saying? So please don't ever let it cross your mind that you'll be a believer that doesn't hear God and, and is not guided by God. The steps of a righteous man are ordered. That's how you get blessed. Amen. Glory to God. Hmm. So, the, 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 today I'm going to talk about how to confirm, you know, if you are being led by God. If what you are hearing or what you are receiving is of God. All right? I, will not be able to, I might not be able to mention all the points in this service, so I'll continue in the next service. So, how to, how to measure if what I'm hearing is of God? Because as a newborn believer, as a newborn Christian... Um, you, you need to start to be able to decipher when it's just your mind speaking or when it's the Holy Spirit actually speaking to you. And we establish that sometimes the Holy Spirit speaks by just an inward witness. So it is not words. It's just a, a nudging and a knowing you have that this is what I should do. Or sometimes there's still small voice. Praise God. So how do I confirm if what I'm claiming to hear or what I think I'm being led to do is by bleak, I mean, is um, authentic. It's, it's correct. The first way we confirm our divine guidance is that it must not be against Scripture. Whatever you are receiving or hearing cannot be against what? Scripture. It cannot be against Scripture. Because the Bible says that all these things agree. It says the spirit, the word, and the blood, they all agree. So it's, it's, it's impossible for the, the, the spirit to be saying one thing and it now be against the word of God. Did you, I don't know if you can find that for me. It's in First John somewhere. That the spirit... The blood, the, the blood and the word of God also. Those three things. They always agree. Basically saying it's impossible for the Holy Spirit to be telling you something that is contrary to the word of God. In fact, the Bible says when the Holy Ghost comes, he will, spe- he will not just speak of himself. He will speak of the, of the things that the God has already said. He's going to be in line and in alignment with scripture. The Holy Ghost cannot start leading you to do something that is against the word of God. Very important. He said, and there be three that bear witness in the earth. He said, the spirit, the water, we all know that the water is usually used to represent what? The word of God, okay? The water, washing, washing by water, um, by the word of God, okay? So, um, if you know about interpreting scripture, the water is always the word. So, he said, the spirit, the water, and the blood, these three, are all, they always agree. They always agree. Hallelujah. So when the Holy Spirit comes, he will not speak of himself. He will speak of, the, of, of, of what, what has already been revealed to the Son. So basically, you know, this, the, 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 your, your leading or whatever God is telling you must be in line with Scripture. It cannot contradict Scripture. So for instance, you cannot say God is saying that you are going to marry someone that is married. 
That's contradicting scripture because that man is already married or that woman is already married. Praise God. You cannot say God says you should not go to church again. There are people that, that propagate those things, that just worship God in your heart and in your house. That has never been the practice. That has never been supported in Scripture. The Bible makes it clear that we cannot forsake the assembling together of the believers. You must always assemble. Believing is synonymous with belonging. You must always belong. So that's how it, it was designed by God. So you can't say you are hearing those kind of weird things. Everything you are claiming to hear or be guided to do must be in line with Scripture. You can't say you are led to steal somebody's money. You, you are led to lie. That the Holy Ghost just told me to change my age. Mm -mm. It's not the Holy Ghost. It's your personal greedy ghost. <laughs> that told you that. That the Holy Ghost... See, you, when God is leading you, He will not even lead you against authority. He will give you favor where it matters. He won't just tell you, rebel. Don't answer anybody. You are on your own. Do anything you like. That's why we said throughout the course of this teaching, if you are not somebody responsive to the Spirit or obedient to the Spirit, you tend not to get a lot of divine guidance because you are, you are a stubborn person. You don't, you don't respond. When they share things in church, you don't respond. You must be responsive. It's, see, when you are responsive, it helps your spirit receive. Like I explained, it's like somebody that has closed his hand. When you have closed your hand, you, you, what is in your hand can't come out, but what, what the one also puts in your hand cannot enter. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's how it is when you are hardened in your heart. When the Holy Ghost is prompting you to do something. And you are you had you don't want to do it. Hallelujah. So it cannot contradict scripture. Whatever God is guiding you or telling you to do cannot contradict scripture. Number two. When how to confirm if what I'm receiving or the leading I'm getting is correct or right. Number two is that it should not take away my peace. It should not take away my peace. When you are being guided and led by God, one of the signs is that you will have peace. Now, listen, listen, this is how it works, guys. This is how it works, guys. As a believer, you're always supposed to have peace. You have supernatural peace that God has planted in your heart. Somebody gets what I'm saying? Peace is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So as long as you have the Holy Ghost, you already have a supernatural peace that makes you not to panic in the face of trouble. So as a believer, you are working with that peace. But whenever you find out that you are about to do something and that peace has gone, somebody gets what I'm saying. So it's not that when you want to do something then you're looking for the peace. No, you already should always have what? Peace. But you should notice, you should be so used to that peace that you should notice when you are about to do something and that peace just disappears. So that's like a, a, a warning sign that, hey, watch that step. If your peace has gone, watch that step. Why did your peace just disappear? If your peace has gone, watch that step. Are you here, somebody? So when you are praying about something, you are deciding about something, you are talking about something, and you don't feel the peace anymore. You should check it out. Let's see Colossians 3.15. Colossians 3.15. He says, and let what? The peace of God do what? Rule in your hearts. Let the peace of God do what? Rule in your hearts. Give me the amplified version of this. Give me the amplified version of this. He says, let the peace of God, I like this, the inner calm of one who walks what? Peace. So you see, it's not today we're looking for this peace. It's not that we are praying now and we want to know that we have peace. No, you should permanently, if you walk with God, you should always have peace. Somebody get what I'm saying? This issue of divine guidance and God leading you and guiding you, it's not that when you are in trouble, you are communing with God. No, you should already have a communion with God. You should have a, a lifestyle of prayer and relationship with God. That's how it was designed. It's not that I'm, I'm, in, I'm in crisis now. Oh God, John and Jonathan, John and John, I have to give them answer this week. Tell me, Lord, tell me, Lord. You see, it doesn't work like God. And this is why a lot of people don't get results in God. Because they never really fully commit to a lifestyle of, of, of working with God. They just, they, they, God is somebody they go to when they want to use Him. 
when they are in trouble, oh God, I just want to go. And then God, God, God is too big to be bullied. He's too big to be rushed. Are you here, somebody? You have, to, you have to have a lifestyle of obeying God and walking with God. Let's go. Let's go back. Let the peace of Christ, that inner calm of one who walks daily with him, be what? Let it be the controlling factor in your hearts. Look at what it says. Deciding and what? Settling what? Questions that what? Arise. Said it, it helps you decide. One version of Amplified also says, let it be the umpire. Let it be the referee. Let that peace be the referee. Tell you that <laughs> red card to Jonathan. Don't marry him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let that peace of God. Wow. For me, it, 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 was, it, it, it has always been one of my biggest assets as a believer. Whenever God speaks. Oh, man. Whenever God speaks, the thing is done. Whenever God speaks, it's so settled. Hallelujah. Many of you are, you are, you are, see, you know the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Have you seen that scripture before? What they're saying there is not that if you delight in the Lord, then anything you want, God will give you. No, that's not what they're saying. That's not what they're saying. What they're trying to say is this. If you really just love God, just delight yourself in God. They are saying God will start putting desires in your heart. So this is what happens. When you love God and you're just crazy about God, God will just from nowhere plant a desire that won't you like to own your house? You say, I, I do. And it will be a desire in your heart. You will, sometimes you will think it's just you that suddenly got tired of rent. But it's not just you. It's God planting the desire because there is already the provision. Somebody get what I'm saying? There's the provision. So God just puts that desire in your heart. And before you know it, you start taking steps. But everything is already lined up because the path of a just man is as a shining light. He has laid it all out for you. Somebody get what I'm saying? So he puts desires in you. When you connect with God like that, he plans the desires. He plans the ideas. He says, won't you like to start your business? Let it be a lot. This is how you will do it. Start this bakery. Not fashion, not anything. Start this, this one. And you will just find out everything is just set. There's a shop somewhere. Somebody's waiting to give out that shop. He doesn't know who he wants to give it to until you arrive. Are you here, somebody? He will put the desires in your heart. The right desires. Desires of things he has already provided. Glory to God. That's what happened to Abraham. Had a desire to sacrifice his son. Got there, but there was already a ram provided. Are you here, somebody? They said that, that there's no way, naturally, that that ram can be up there. It was a three days walk. Three days walk. No shepherd takes ram up there. The air is even very thin. It's hard to breathe there. Three days climbing. What are the chances that a lone ram will be caught somewhere, waiting. It's totally, almost impossible. But God already knows where your car is, where your job is. That's why as a believer, you don't say what news is saying. You need to separate yourself from this world. Some of you are too in love with this world. See, I, like I told you, I don't read or hear negative news. I don't. I just stay with what the Bible says. This world is going to catch up with the Bible. You didn't get what I said. You don't understand what I said. Whatever they are telling you, it might be a fact. But don't bother with that. If you stay with the truth, the facts will catch up with the truth. So stay with the truth. Says there's unemployment. Dollar is going down. I, 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 I don't listen to that. The only day I will bother is when I see in the scripture. Or God tells me, that, my son, things are getting tough too here in heaven. In Jamaica the other day, could not buy some things. So the exchange rates in heaven and Naira is becoming tough. Except God says that if God does not say that, then my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. What are you, who are you looking for to supply? If you are looking for government to supply, I can tell you right now, they will break your heart. 
If you're looking for a man to supply, I can tell you right now, they'll break your heart. If you're looking for a dollar to supply, I'll tell you right now, they'll break your heart. But if you're looking unto God, he said, those that look unto him, they are never ashamed. Oh. Who are you looking up to? Who are you looking up to? Who, who is disappointing you? You're looking at the wrong person. God never disappoints. Are you here, somebody? Peace. So watch out for that peace. You're about to die. You know, we read Apostle Paul and Co. They wanted to enter a certain place to Asia to preach. Mm, Say the Spirit forbid them. They wanted to go to Messiah to preach. Mm, the Spirit forbid them. So they stayed where they were until they had a vision that night. Come over to Macedonia and what? Help us. Are you here, somebody? That peace. That peace. Sometimes you can be going through a dangerous thing and still have peace. It happened to Paul. Paul knew he had to preach in Jerusalem and all that and in some places. And everybody kept telling him, hey, they're going to beat you up in that place. He said, I know. He said, I'm ready to be beaten up and even killed there because I have to share that gospel there. They told the prophet came and said, hey, hey, you are going to go to Jerusalem. The person that owns this gedu, they will beat him in Jerusalem. He said, I'm aware. You know, and that takes me to what I was, you know, I didn't have time to really deal with this. Prophets are not meant to give us direction. Prophets are not meant to give us direction as New Testament believers. That's not the idea at all. A New Testament prophet is not for direction. He can confirm what you already have. He can confirm a leading or a direction God is already giving you. And we don't seek prophets. We don't go about seeking prophets to tell us what God is saying. That's not, it's not a New Testament practice at all. Those are things that put many people in trouble. That's not what we're supposed to be. You don't go seeking the prophet and they will now say, hmm, come and sing by 2 p.m. and he'll give you a prophet. No, 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 no. Everybody is guided by the Spirit of God. So what happens is that once in a while, God can use someone to confirm what you already have in your heart. Are you here, somebody? As a rule, I'm not moved by any other, anybody's prophecy at all. Not moved by it at all until I receive my own leading. I can't trust any other person's prophecy. They might have eaten pandediam and be saying something. You know how you use it to plan your life. Do you understand? You don't use human beings to plan your life. It, by the end of your life, you now find out you missed it. You now be looking for the prophet. <laughs> is that what you tell God? That one man said, ah, too risky. Are you here, somebody? Number three. Other mature believers should be able to confirm what you are being guided to do. In God's design, you must always be in a family. Like we said, no believer is supposed to be a lone ranger. Every believer is supposed to belong to a family. A church, a connect group, a prayer group, a small um, um, uh, set of you know, believers. You know? So what God expects is that once in a while, when you have some major leading and direction, other mature Christians around you should be able to confirm that it's true this thing you are saying, we believe is true. That that's what God is saying. He helps you. There may put have entered trouble because they are alone. When they were hearing rubbish, nobody was around them to put their head in place. Somebody gets in this. The Bible says, First um, Corinthians fourteen verse twenty nine. Did you read it? Bring it. First Corinthians fourteen twenty nine. It says, "Let the prophets speak." Two or three. He said, and let what? The other judge. Give me, is it New King James? This one looks uh, somehow. Or NIV. There's one that, that makes it a bit better. Okay. He said, let two or three prophets speak and let others what? Judge. Okay, but basically, the point they're saying is that others can judge what this people claim that God is saying. So if you notice, in Acts of the Apostles, when they, they said many pastors and apostles and prophets went to fast. That in Acts 13 or so, he said, um, when they fasted and prayed, he said, God spoke to them and said, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas for the work I have what? Called them to do. They were fasting at that period and God spoke to the whole house and they all confirmed that they believed that God was sending Paul and Barnabas or who, um, you know, to do a special work and they prayed for them and released them. Did you bring that up? Let's say. So, so I'm saying, once in a while, 
when you are getting the leading, other mature, not just babies or people that just hate you, other mature Christians are allowed to pray along with you and confirm it. So that's why in this church we always say, before you start a relationship, please talk to someone. I, I know there are many people that every day I meet members of this church that have entered one chance. And, and I ask them, who did you talk to? Who did you get cancer from for you? They say, I didn't know. I didn't know. The, 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 I didn't know. Yeah. Now you get that. You see, yeah. this life is interesting. If you are hungry, it won't affect you. Know you understand? If you can't sleep at night, I will sleep. That's how this life is. I can wake up and say, sorry, sorry. And I will off phone and I will what? Sleep. You to know this. That you are alone. So if you are acting foolishly, you think it's a global group foolishness. Because every day, I mean, we enter one chance, pure one chance. I said, How did you enter this? Did you, did anybody, did you talk to any minister? Did you talk to any pastor? He said, I didn't know I'm supposed to talk to the pastor. Hey, you know, you will know you are supposed to suffer. <laughs> every day, I meet those kind of people. They say they don't know. And I'm wondering, which church did you say you were attending? This church, you did discovery. Do you see teaching discovery? Teaching discovery. I didn't know. <laughs> Go chop slap for the one chance we enter. So we always tell people, if you feel, oh, you want to marry someone, you are feeling, um, um, this might be the person you marry, please get counsel. It's for safety. It's not because we want to control your life. Not because we are, we, are, we are not busy. We are very busy self. But we need to help you to make sure you are in the right direction. Because the Bible says, in the multitude of counselors, there is what? Safety. I'm not the one that wrote it. <laughs> because we, I don't know why some people not respond. Me, once I say something in the Bible, there's no argument inside. I don't like discussion. This is in the Bible. What are you arguing? So submit yourself to authority like that. Let one or two mature Christians reason with you, pray along with you, confirm with you what you think you're hearing. Especially when it's a very important decision, like marriage, or you want to go into ministry, or you want to you know travel somewhere. Let let them pray with you. Let them confirm with you. He said, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, what? Separate. And there were many. Look at verse 1. Let's see the people that were in that prayer meeting. Verse 1, guys. He said, now they were in the church that was at Antioch, setting what? Prophets and teachers. So there were many believers there, basically. That's what they were saying. As Barnabas, Simon, and they called them their names, some of the guys that were there. So now verse 2. Verse 2 says, as they ministered to the Lord and what? Fasted. He said, the Holy Ghost, what? Said. Separate unto me. Barnabas and so When they said the Holy Ghost said, do you think it means that as we were praying, voice just came from heaven? Separate. Paul. Do you think that's how it happened? <laughs> you don't know I can shoot movie. Now, small thing remains. Now, me and Bazaar go shoot full home video. MK go do the soundtrack. Full one. Where's MK? You know where your glasses today, so I know you're okay. <laughs> it's not like what I'm saying. So do you think that's how it happened, that the voice came from heaven? Is that how it happened? No. What happened was that there were many of them praying, and somebody must have prophesied there and said, hey, praise God, I sense God is saying this. Paul too, and who, Barnabas too might have been sensing their heart, hey, I'm going to launch the work. And other people agreed. Other people will pray and confirm, and they all agreed that this is what God is saying. Somebody get what I'm saying? So it's okay. It's always been a family of mature Christians, not carnal, lousy, and lazy Christians. Oh, mature praying Christians. When, 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 when I received in my heart to start DCC in 1996, God spoke to me that you should you will start the youth, um, youth fellowship. I called believers together. I called a guy called Obi together. He's one of the oldest members. I called Pastor Peter. Called one or two people. We we did a prayer meeting, and we were just praying that Lord, this is what I'm sensing, but I don't know what you are saying. So we prayed, and Pastor P also still prophesied in that meeting about the fellowship. So that was like confirmation of what I've already seen. Remember, I, I, wasn't, I didn't call the prayer meeting for anybody to prophesy. You can't, you can't do that. You can't manipulate those things. Let it flow. And I already had received it, but I got a confirmation through the prophecy, and that's how we launched DCC in 1996. Somebody gets what I'm saying, guys. So you must always have that around you. There might be other Christians that can reason with you spiritually and say, hey, this thing doesn't make sense. Or this thing might be right, but the timing... Can you just give it some time? Because many people like that rush and leave their pastor, rush and leave their house. Rush and, you might be right, but let's give it some time. Let it play out a bit more. So he said, um, separate unto me, Paul and Barnabas, 
for the work I have called them to. And the next verse and quote says, then they laid hands on them and released them. The last one, and I'll stop here. Last one, the manifestation is another way to know whether you are hearing well. That means the, the thing you claim to hear, does it come to pass? Praise God. I've seen people say, oh, God told me to go uh, and apply in that place. And you go and apply, and they apply you to the gate. <laughs> when God is the one leading you, there must be a manifestation of what you claim to be hearing. Now, sometimes it might not be immediate, I understand that. But at the long run, there must be a benefit to that obedience or to that thing you are claiming you are hearing. And see, don't feel bad if you miss hear or misinterpret what God is saying. It happens to everybody. As we grow, we perfect our ability to be sensitive. Do you understand, guys? So don't feel bad about it, about missing God. Like I said, in my early days, there are probably times also I took some steps. I thought it was God, and I found out later, this could not have been God, because it didn't work out at all. Somebody gets what I'm saying. But as you grow in the Lord, you get better and better. I like children a lot. Children are amazing. That's why, that's, that's why God says, when you come to the kingdom, come as a child. You know, children can fall as many times as possible when they're trying to walk. It doesn't discourage them at all. They don't even feel ashamed that, hey, I'm falling. People are looking at all. They will fall many times and still stand up and try again. But you see, as you grow old, you are ashamed to fall. If you fall, you are thinking, hey, I don't disgrace myself here. It's like those fall that your wig fall out. <laughs> you are very worried, very embarrassed, but kids are not like that at all. So you must be like a child in the kingdom. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. There's nobody in this kingdom that has not made mistakes. Don't let anybody put you under pressure. Let anybody judge you at all. There's nobody in this kingdom that has not made mistakes. Somebody get what I'm saying? And, that, and, 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 and throughout, throughout next month, we are doing a salvation uh, series. So please, next month, throughout next month, make sure you invite as many of your unbeliever friends as you can. It's, it's a, because it's leading up to Easter. Easter is next month. So we're really going to just talking about how saving grace of God works. Do you understand, guys? Because many people don't even know why and how they are born again. And we have a dress code throughout the, the uh, month. Um, sorry, I didn't tell you. You should have announced it in the workers meeting. Um, I want one of the days will be denim jeans dressing, or the other days will be Jesse. So um, you have to let us know. I don't know which, which day will be which day, or should we just decide now? Let's do meeting now and just decide. <laughs> yeah, let's decide now so everybody just know. Um, Thanksgiving normally is Thanksgiving native. Second Sunday will what? Jeans. So church, I hear you. We're deciding now. <laughs> Second Sunday is jeans. So wear anything jeans. Denim is a denim service. Now please. Um, if you don't have jeans, wear your buba and uh, 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 rapper and everything. Wear it like that. It's okay. But if you do have jeans, second Sunday is jeans. Then the third Sunday is Jesse. So wear a Jesse, a club Jesse, whatever, whatever. You know the club that is winning the premiership. If you like, don't wear it. Winners. Identify with winners. Uh-huh. But wear any club you like. If you don't have Jesse, wear any sports or, you know, any, it mustn't be football Jesse. Any Jesse. Baseball jersey, any jersey. If you don't have anything, wear sportswear. If you don't have that one, just yes. The whole it's, a, it's just a concept, so don't kill yourself. Nobody's gonna beat you. And if you don't have sportswear, wear your suit and tie. Come like that. But it's just a theme service because throughout the month we're kind of doing outreach, and it, it will lead up to also onto baptism, um, Easter Sunday and baptism Sunday. So that's what that was about. Okay, praise God. Do we understand? Okay. So manifestation, manifestation. All right. Um, whatever you are claiming to be hearing needs to manifest. Let me read one scripture. Lamentations 3, 37. Lamentations 3. So if somebody is telling you, God is telling me this one sort of thing, I doesn't... <laughs> How many of you have seen those people that said God told them to be president before? Some of them now, they've changed their mind. And some of them, you, you, you know it's funny because 10 people are saying God said they'll be president. 10 of you. Is the same God that told 10 of you the same thing. So you know that a few of them probably are not hearing... Well, see, you must also learn that it's not everything God is even telling you or everything that you think God is telling you that you must even declare. Uh, somebody gets what I'm saying? Some of the things, you keep it in your heart. That's what the Bible says. That some things that God told Mary, she, Mary about Jesus and all that, she kept it in her heart. It's not everything you come and say, God shall be president of Nigeria. Ah, you have never won local government election. <laughs> somebody getting this. Even if you feel God is telling you, that information is between you and God. Be taking physical steps. Same thing if God tells you, you marry somebody. Don't go and tell the girl that the Lord say you're my wife. That's not how they toast girl. <laughs> Keep that, inf- that information is your private information. 
Just go and talk to her. Say, how are you? What's your name? You know, can I get to meet you? Sometimes even when you meet the girl, you will know that it's not God that was telling you. It was a shape that confused you. <laughs> you know this is shape that just deceived me. Because you thought it was God, but then you talk to her. You know it can't be God. No. <laughs> it's not God. It's just I was looking at her shape. That's why I was moved. It's not the Holy Ghost that moved me. It's shape ghost. <laughs> it's shape ghost that moved me there. It's not the Holy Ghost. You don't know that. You just know that it can't be this girl. There's no spirit of God in this girl. This is not... Is somebody get what I'm saying? So please don't confuse your, your leading, you know, to me, you must always announce it, you know, and all that. He said, who is he that say it, and it come to pass when the Lord commanded it not? So there must be manifestation. You know, like I told you, there are many times that God told me something. I have to confirm for myself that I want, I want to make sure I'm even hearing God. So I'll, I'll particularly look out for it. You know, I shared the story of that guy I met, you know, in school that I didn't have transfer money. And God showed me the guy in the morning. And by evening, afternoon, I was in the bus. And God told me that same guy I showed him the money. I said, I have to see this for myself. And I waited. And truly, it was the guy. And the guy paid my... And I didn't even know he was going to pay for me that day. Because I didn't have money. But all that was lined up. So you must, there must be a confirmation. Hallelujah. You know, I also shared <laughs> my bicycle story. That was very funny. I, and I was just seeing you guys here jokingly that day. That, you know, as the guy wrote me that God is saying, God told him to tell me to give me the bicycle. I sincerely felt so. And I'm not the kind of person you can harass with God said. Me, I must hear my own. God told you it's good for you. You and God know the business. I'm like that. If you come and tell me you need money, and I, if God doesn't tell me anything about it, I will not do it. I'm just like that. So I'm not the kind of person you bully with those kind of things. And the guy is not even as spiritual as me or anything. But he said something kept impressing in him to ask me. And truly, as I sat there reading, remember the day before, I was feeling, who, I want to give this bicycle out. You see, God had prepared my heart. So I knew I was supposed to give him. And I wasn't planning to get anything done. And after I shared the story on the island church, somebody walked up to me and said, I want to pay for the bicycle. You have given the guy, yes, I know. I just want to pay you for it so that you still get the money that you wanted to get from it. And he gave me the money in dollars that day. In dollars, in cash, that day. I wouldn't have planned that. So there was manifestation to what I was hearing. So now I'm confident about what I heard. Do you understand? That's how you get confident about hearing when you see the manifestation of what God told you. Somebody get what I'm saying? So check manifestation. Not that every time you hear, this is my husband, then he has married somebody else next year. Yeah, you never heard well. That's not God. Somebody get in this, guys. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for sensitivity of heart for every person here. You, concerning the issues that are troubling you, you will get a direct word from God. Amen. You will get a rema word from God. Amen. God will send you a word of direction. God will send you a word of wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I speak to your spirit man. I command it to come alive in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your spirit will start picking signals from heaven. Amen. Your spirit will start hearing better. In the name of Jesus, you will never miss your way again. Your steps will be ordered of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, receive grace to be meek. Receive grace to be humble. You will always be malleable in the hands of God. From today, whenever you are about to make a decision, receive the wisdom to acknowledge God. Because he said in his word that if you acknowledge him, he will direct our paths. From today, receive grace to acknowledge God. And lastly, I pray for you that your steps will continually be ordered of the Lord. You will be at the right places at the right time. You will make the move at the right time. You will make the call at the right time. You will fix the right figure at the right time. In the name of Jesus. Your steps will be ordered. I say 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 your steps will be ordered. All the blessings that God has for you on the earth, He will order your steps to them in the name of Jesus. Life is like a treasure hunt. There are treasures all over, but you have to find them. And God doesn't want you to hustle to find them. He wants to guide you to find them. I pray that your shepherd will guide you in the name of Jesus. I say your shepherd will lead you in the name of Jesus. You too shall not want in the name of Jesus. He will lead you beside still waters. He will lead you, lead you in paths of righteousness in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Come on, give the Lord a big hand. We had a great time in the service. Um, we, our church is based on the word of victory. God spoke to us and said, as David never lost the battle, that's how he's going to work with us. So we believe that a relationship with Jesus Christ gives you victory in every area of your life. We also believe that serving God can be fun. We're a very fun-loving church. And we believe that God helps to build our character. Um, we believe that this will not be your last time here with us. And feel free, whenever you see me, to walk up to me and say hi. Our welcome team are available to answer any of your questions. Welcome home.